The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hello, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. Hour. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday and here at noon till 1 p.m. at 877-927-6648. Now, here's a question that I have. In these three little candles, let me just show you this very, I'll make a close-up of it. See these candles right here in the Dow? <clears throat> Peak C at 26,966 pulls back, and the moment you go to 26,967, you've started leg D. That's a floating letter, and that goes on until it makes a peak. Well, yesterday there was a doji candle, a beautiful plus sign, small candle after the, the what is today? Uh, today's Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. After Monday's tiny little doji candle, there was a slightly bigger one on, on Tuesday. Ends with a plus sign. My rule of thumb is when this happens at at, at highs, uh, going towards highs or at highs, or going towards lows or at lows, um, there's a rule of thumb. If there is a close below yesterday's low of 27, 290 in the Dow, and we're at 27, 303, just above it, we've been below it. If there is a close below it, it makes the closing price, the doji open and close, Around about 27, uh, 349 to 27, 335, it makes that resistance. And if the second day there is after that, there is a close below the first day's low, it means that you've probably started some kind of a down move. All right, so making it real simple, the MACD is so strong. Yeah, this is the MACD, the moving average convergence, divergence, nine period differential in green, very much above the slow moving average of 26 periods, exponential moving average, and the stochastic still at 97%. And that's the reason why I said to subscribers to my opening call, because we've been long from the July, uh, from the June low, June the third low, uh, just off the actual bottom. Um, but that very day of the low, we went long, and we've stayed long, taken just a little bit off. But I had said to subscribers, we've got, this is where there's a tremendous amount of upside resistance coming within another 30 to 50 points of certainly where we got yesterday. That high of yesterday of 27,397 said to me, and then a pullback after it said to me that that whole, that, that inside track resistance level is going to be kind of formidable in the very near term. A close decisively above it says, no, you're wrong. That's almost like a halfway marker with the doji candle. So today's close is very important. One of the reasons why we took an action yesterday, just seven points off the Dow top, was because my thinking was that it's a good initiation position. But if you look at this chart that I keep showing you of the uh, exponential moving average, uh, the, the sorry, the nine and the 14 period exponential moving averages, look what has to happen for the Dow. <clears throat> you see all these auto Chapman wave automatic resistance points? Look what has to happen just for the Dow to touch the green nine period exponential moving of, of 27,124 uh, and then to break it and then to go under the 26,891 14 period moving average just as it did last time when we went short just before the day of the, of the last top. Um, because this whole process take, took about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine bars, ten bars already before you got a crossover confirmation in the moving averages. So this could be a, a process. And if we had to do that to the S&P, very similar. And the S&P <clears throat> is, at this particular point, it has touched the green line, unlike the Dow. And that says it's getting closer and closer to making that resistance. And that level we're at 29.96. And that level right now is 20, ooh, it's a little hard to see. 20, I'll do this. Uh, 29.93. 
A close below that says, well, the next level of support is 29.71, the 14 period moving average. And yet, look what it's going to take. It's going to take really bad news or a very sharp up. You see that and see what's happening right now. Now it does down now. Uh, 56 as it is down eight and eight, almost nine. So um, we're looking at a process unfolding right now. Limited upside, and we'll see how the, the downside support levels are uh, going to hold. So that's an, that's with that. <clears throat> and most importantly, all the weekly charts are still very strong. And the QQQ right now has that extended its down. No, I just did the wrong thing. QQQ, one, two, three, there it is. It hasn't gone to the nine period moving average of 192.15. It's at 192.89. I think it's going to touch it over the next uh, couple of hours. And then the same with the IWM. The IWM is under it. It touched the 14 period moving average of 153.68 and it's trading at 154.65. So it, over a period of the day, it could start to pull back a little more. We'll see if suddenly money goes into the small caps. So we've got that. And the next thing we want to look at is. The, the um, yeah, what we want you to look at is gold using this particular technique now, look, the 9, the 14. <clears throat> but didn't even get to the, there we go, GC. Right. We got to the 14 period moving average exactly this morning. 1400.8 is the low, uh, is the uh, support, and this went to 1401.3. Good rebound of 13.2 right now. This is very good action, but I'm still saying uh, I don't like to draw on this chart. But you see what we've got here? We've got a rectangle formation. So close, the size of close above the 1442.9, high of the 25th of June, would be very important. And that would suggest that we've got actually a new wave count unfolding. And if you're looking at silver, look what silver did. That is a spectacular move. Absolutely a fabulous move. Just it didn't even break down nine period. It didn't even go underneath the 14. And this is very good. And if you're looking at the dollar right now, the dollar is trading down 19 cents. It's kind of stuck in this range. It's had a very nice bounce. Um, 97.57 is the Chapman Wave automated resistance levels, all the way down to 96.34 is support. Uh, TLT is going to be very important at this stage. TLT is up 86 cents at 131.44. It went under the 14 period and, and the nine period moving average, and it's trying at 133.45. It needs to get somewhere into the one, 132s. Going to the 132s suggests that yields are going back down again. But if it's just stuck here in the range, uh, well, we'll see what happens. So here's the TLT. <clears throat> Let me show you how it went out of the rectangle formation. Remember, rectangle formations can last a lot longer than your patience. There it is. And now we're right back in, and uh, yeah, 132s goes to the 132s. That'll be a, that'll be a positive for bonds. All right, we got John in Philly. John, how are you? Basil, uh, I'm very well. Thank you for taking the call. And um, I am calling in, sir, to uh, put a question to you regarding the indices which you just went through, um, Basil. Um, you do a much better job than I could ever do on uh, attempting to formulate uh, what might likely happen, you know, a month, two, three down the road. So, John, uh, just so be since I'm limited go... in that regard, I like break, to uh, try hello, to hello. understand what John, scenarios John, John. are possible. We've got a break. We'll be right back. We'll talk about that. Hold on. Taz profile scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz profile scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. 
Sign up today. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, everyone. We're back. Hopefully, John is still holding on. John, you there? I am, Basil. Okay, great. Sorry, we had a break, and I just had to uh, interrupt you for a moment. So, your actual question right now is? Yeah, so, uh, yes. Here's the question. Uh, since I personally am limited and do poorly at uh, forecasting out a month to three, I like to, uh, I found it much more, uh, for, for me, uh, effective and successful to uh, try to understand plausible scenarios going ahead, look for clues uh, that support a scenario, and then trade accordingly. So, All right, yes, I've seen with, you do that. With that, that very in well. mind, yes. I am looking at the S&P and the Dow and asking that question, is this very strong rally <clears throat> one that will extend uh, both in time and price higher? Or alternatively, are we completing something where a very low risk short is, uh, is setting up? So that's the question I'm asking myself. And the question I have specifically for you, Basil, and your Chapman Wave pertains to your Chapman Wave labeling of the monthly chart, both the S&P and the Dow. And I see how the, uh, excuse me, the September-October 2018 peaks uh, on the monthly, you labeled a Chapman uh, peak E on the S&P, and on the Dow, it was a peak F. And uh, we had the, the decline uh, fourth quarter, and now we've rallied to higher highs. My question, uh, whereas in the Dow and the S&P monthly today, your preferred Chapman Wave labeling is a new leg A, my question, is it legitimate to have an alternate labeling where we have on the S&P a Chapman leg F right here and a Dow chart leg G? That's the question. Okay. That's a, let me just explain for uh, folks that are <clears throat> listening and perhaps for the first time listening to uh, uh, the actual uh, wave count itself. Let me just get to this quickly, and then we can go straight from there. Patterns, patterns template. 
So basically, folks, what we're looking at the Chapman wave, we try to identify the lowest low, and we count each successively higher peak. When you get to the fourth highest peak, peak D, that's where other things can happen, but you can go to E, F, and G, the patterns we look for, the arch and the cup, and a combination of the H pattern, which is the straight line with an arch, and a straight line up with a cup. All right, so now we've got that, and this is what I wanted to explain. <clears throat> Within the context of the S&P, if you go from the low that was made February of 2016 at 1810 and merely count each successively higher peak, you get to that peak D right here. And this was the peak high of January of 2018. That was at 26,616. S&P was at 2872s. And then there was a pullback and it went down to the 14 period moving average and finished it, completed that upside move. As the price went to a doji candle high, 29.40, and that was the high that was made right there in September. The Dow's high was in October. And then there was a very sharp decline from 29.40 to 23.46. And the MACD turned down sharply. Stochastic really took a hit. And now we've got everything in place <clears throat> to say, even though it's the middle of the month, <clears throat> a day or two after the middle of the month, the MACD has finally crossed positive as we're speaking over the last couple of days. And that is a good sign, especially if it's happening in a buy signal to buy mode in the monthly chart. Now, the big question is this. John pointed it out, and it's a very good question. It's an absolutely valid question. Are there alternate counts? Well, if there was an alternate count, then this nine-month correction from the January 2018 high in the Dow to the October high of uh, 26,951 of 2018, and then the nine months after the pullback to 21,712 to yesterday's high, that has already used up a bunch every almost other month. We've had a peak, and now we're in leg C to the upside. Yes, you could have an alternate count G slash C, and because in the Chapman wave, a new buy signal is canceled completely. If you go below a peak D, the low that was established back at 20, oh, around about the 20,300, 20,400 in 2017, we didn't get there. We went to 21,712. So this, yes, it could be a continuation pattern just to have a really monster uh, three, a, a rising trend line. You can see this is a trend line here. And if I go to the S&P, it's the same thing, SPX. I just finished it up. I just drew it in. You can see that there's a rising tra Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. So, yes, it's absolutely legitimate, um, John, to say, why not have a continuation of the notation than to have something fresh? Other than this, the decline from the... Uh, October, September, October highs in the down the S&P, down to the low that was made t December the 24th or 26th, depends on when you're looking at it. That was of such consequence. The rally that we've had has been so powerful that some index has not all, not the IWM, not the New York Stock Exchange, but some of the indices have gone to all-time highs, the key ones. And that says to me, that no matter how I cut it, you can think of this as just one bar from the December low to where we are. Think of it as one candle. That's a that's a whopping engulfing candle of everything that happened for almost two years. So I just I just don't see how I could call it a G, except I could have a, a serious pullback and then start a little mini A and a mini B and then try to play catch up. In the end, we might land up at a peak B whichever way we count it, but everything about this suggests that this is a brand new buy signal to buy mode in the Dow and the S&P based on the criteria that I like to use, especially the fact that you've gone from the low of December. As soon as we started January, you could start to count. That was the idea that you might be able to start to count, to count the peaks because you had made a trough. That means there was a higher low from the December low to January. Yeah, yeah. And now this is one leg up. It's still, even now, it's in leg A. Even now, if August has, even by one penny, a high above the high of um, July's high, 
That'll extend leg A. I like what I see. <clears throat> can we have a pretty serious pullback? Yeah, I think we can. But to see um, the, the S&P, I don't know what's going to take it down to the 2847, 2802, 9 and 14 period moving averages, um, and then break under that. I can see it going down sharply. I just, nothing here suggests that. And, and it's not a head and shoulders because, first of all, it's just a sharply rising uh, um, format. The right shoulder now is much higher than the head, so that's negated that. I've been saying that all the time, that you can't, not in my work, can you get a head and shoulders with a V-shaped trough down to 2346 from the 2940 without restarting. So, John, if you want to hold on, there's quite a lot to go because I wanted to show the resistance levels, but that's what I wanted to say so far. Thank you, Basil. Thank you very much. I will talk a little bit more about it as we come back. Thank you, John. We'll be back. Dow's down. Five. I'll be right back. S&P's down. Almost done. Be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, the opening call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We're back. I just want to finish this discussion that I just had with John from Philly. Uh, the S&P is trading down almost nine at this point. Now, these are the auto Chapman Wave automated uh, resistance or support levels the light green is actually turns out i should have made it red but that's the way it is um, is the uh, resistance and you can see from the 10 minute chart 3000 today and what was the high today today so far is two nine yeah i don't want to mess around uh oh there it is uh 3005.28 so it's just gone slightly above it and now it's pulled back 
and that's what. If I go to the 120 minutes, 3,016.33, remember this is, uh, this goes to the fractions, it's not like a, an E-mini, uh, trades in quarter, quarter points, 299.09 uh, is the support, and we're at 2995, uh, so we're underneath that support, that's 120 minute chart. But look at these resistance levels in the daily, 3,016, 3,020, 3,027, uh, that's all on the upside, three upside resistance points. If a breakout, 3,099.11, any, any big breakout. And then the, look at the monthly chart. When it had that September high, uh, that was at 29.63. Look at that. That's pretty darn good. Then the support was 22.65. What was the low? 20, 2346. So, and, and now on the upside, we've got 29.82, we went above it, and the very next one is up at the 31.84 level in the monthly chart. So you can see that I've got a lot of resistance levels to overcome. If there's a break into the 30.32 level at any stage in the next few weeks, that's a breakout of all the resistance, and then it's open to go to the upside even more. And the interesting thing is, look, I've got very little on the downside for support. So that kind of opens it up. So I just wanted to show you the automated stuff. The other thing I wanted to show you is within the monthly chart, look at this beautiful technique that I developed a long time ago called the Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. Now you can see this line going up here says we're into that red level right now. We just went to the upside of the green dash line, didn't break out above it, but look at the MACD. The MACD is still very strong and the stochastic's at 95%. I have to tell you, it's gonna take quite a whopper of a pullback to get those down to negative territory. And look at the monthly chart. The MACD has just turned positive. It is up 0.95. It's the first time it's been green since it broke down. Um, that would be back in, in November is when it started to go um, negative. So this is a, a fabulous move. What are we, seventh, seventh, eighth? It's taken eight months, almost nine months to turn positive and the month isn't finished. This is just like mid-month. So anything can happen, but the stochastic in the monthly is at 85%. That's very good action. I just, you know, in the very short term, the reason why for subscribers, we actually had a short position set up within a tick of the all-time high. Um, and that's just a trading position. I'm not changing this so far, the intermediate term, long that we got on June the 3rd. I'm not, I, I have no intention right now of doing anything with that. I don't mind having a special trading position. I don't mind even if that position we have on the long side pulls back. It's just part of the game. I don't know if I, I don't see any way I'm going to be able to get in again uh, with subscribers in this particular move, in this particular pullback, unless something really terrible happens and then we'll have to bail at some point. Um, but at this stage, I, this, this is good action. That's all I can say. So day is young, anything can happen and uh, we'll see how things unfold. Uh, radio show, could I do Snap? Uh, snap is trading at for Hector, uh, let's see. Yesterday, Snap at closed at a, um, a round number 1500. What can you tell us about this uh, theory going forward? Thanks, Hector. So Hector, I'm looking at Snap. You had mentioned it a little while back and it had a fabulous move. It went to not all time highs, but a nice recovery high up in the 16.4. 24 level on the 12th of July, and now it's trading at 14.95, having gone to today's low of 40.56. You can see the MACD deflected lower, that's a negative, and the stochastic is still very negative, on balance volume pullback. So my, my reasoning would have been, I like to look at the round number, it's a different uh, methodology that I used in a doji candle with a round number, but in this case, I would have said to you pretty much the same thing, that if there's a close, Today, below the close of yesterday, 15 round number, 15.00 in SNAP, there's a good chance that if there was another pullback, the big test would, would come on, in this case, the nine period moving average, the green line of 15.13. A close above, above that in two days is, hey, nice save, but now you're going sideways. A close below um, the candle low of the ninth, 14.80 would suggest that we're actually going lower, that we're probably going to test the low of the 2nd of July 
of 13.98. So that's kind of what I would have said to you. Days young, anything can happen. It's only down four cents right now. If there, for this to be like a buy signal, going to a buy mode in the, in the um, right here. Let me just do this live. Uh, so this is the 120 minute chart. What are we looking for? We're looking for a PD at least. So you go A, you go B, C, D. Then it extends to an E, an F, and this is what John was talking about in the monthly chart of the S&P. Yeah, that is a G. Look, the MACD deflected. It didn't even cross negatively. It deflected lower, even though the stochastic was going down. But look at nicely the 9 period and the 14 period moving average held. Now I can put a down arrow. And I can say snap is in a sell mode in the 120 minute chart. If today is a negative close below 14.93, I'll have to say I'm going to put a down arrow at a peak F, and then it's going to take a new move above the high that was made of 16.24, was it, um, to really negate that. So far, it says to me snap is in a choppy sideways to probably down mode right now. It accomplished everything that I need to do in the short term, peak F in the daily. Peak G in the 120 minute chart, 1447 is key support at this particular point, and it's trading nicely above that, up 30 cents above that at 1495. So, and the monthly chart is still very good. So, I think this is just a consolidation at the weekly 200 period exponential moving average in a peak E possible this week, and MACD and stochastic are still good. I think it needs a little time. I'm suggesting to you that if I draw in a pattern right now, it'll be drawing in a rectangle formation. On the right here to see if there can be a nice reverse head and shoulders pattern and it has a very strong off this uh, 14 14s area hope that helped you uh, next question i had was oh transports iyt and csx came down sharply peak oh, this is exactly like snap look peak f sharp pullback um bank d still good stochastic still good i uh, see csx is part of this and it's trading at 180 8.10 in the IYT, the Dow, Dow Jones Transportation Index ETF, minus 6.06, .06, not a good move at all. Um, this is suggesting, I'll draw a rectangle right here. I'm suggesting that this is an area that's in play, and that's the whole 184 and a quarter to 182s over the next couple of days. All right. Um, question I had was in the... XLI, which is the real industrials, or at least it's better than the Dow. Oh, I never finished that. It'll give me a chance just to put my notation. I believe this is a peak D being made today. Still very good action. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Dow's come back a little bit. Down 46. SP's down 73 quarters. Wow, it's a tough one. They just can't drag it into the minus 100 area. We'll be back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an 
average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Yes, yeah, so looking at the E-mini, uh, down 7.25 at 3995.75. Uh, we've been all over the show, a high of 3013, round number high, then 2993, round number low, kind of trading in the middle at 299.99.50. Uh, and I'll just make it clear, any move above 3004, let's make it 3005, that holds for two five-minute bars would suggest that there's a good chance that the market closes just moderately mixed. Maybe even up, but I think more like mixed. But if there is a move below the 29.95 level yet again, I'm not sure we're coming back from the 29.93 low. I think we go right through that. So we're right at a very important moment. And one of the reasons why I keep telling you that even though there was great a great signal yesterday for me and subscribers, um, <clears throat> there is just too much strength in, in, the, in the tools that I use to say that this could be, and this is a real bad news event, and just plunges lower. It, it could be just choppy uh, consolidation for a short period, and then maybe we'll go down later. But at this point, choppy is what I'm looking at. The XLI down 1.26, 77.30, making a peak D as we speak. A kind of a double top in the weekly. This is the true industrials. This is the S&P. Uh, let's see, I'm just moving that. This is the S&P Select Industrial Spider Fund, trading at 77.31. And yeah, it says that there could be a little choppiness here, and that, that concurs with my thinking. Um, okay, a question I had. Where was it? I saw it, and I thought well, that's a great question. Uh, yes, uh, the SMHs. SMH has held very well, even today. It's up 70, uh, 85 cents at 140.83. This is going to be a, a good clue for us because you've got in the weekly, you've got a chap wave cup and ladle breakout on uh, the shorter term, pulls back. Now it's making even a bit, now it's making a real handle formation. And if this SMH is semiconductor ETF, market vectors, Van Eck market vectors, semiconductor ETF at 114.83. <clears throat> can close above 117.30 in the next, oh, I'd say, uh, by, by next Tuesday. That'll be very good action. Otherwise, this is going to pull back, chop, chop, 112 is good support to 110. Um, and I think that's kind of the story right now, that uh, those are the numbers we need to look at. Oh, oh, question I had about the XLF. XLF, remember, is a little different to the BKX, the Keith Brewitt uh, Bank Index, because it has a mix of of banks. The, the XLF is um, S&P Select fi Spider Financials trading down 11 cents. So yeah, what was it? JP Morgan that came out? Was it yesterday? Uh, not bad action. A, B, C, D, E. It's in an E, but it's holding very nicely. The Bank of America was asked about. Oh, very nice move. Up 49 cents to 29.48. We are long. 
for disclosure purposes, but this doesn't mean anything until it starts to trade in the 30.25 area. And let's look at our favorite Goldman Sachs. <clears throat> it had a fabulous couple of days. Now what is it doing? It's just digesting at a PT with a doji candle yesterday at 215.11.41. Goldman Sachs gets to 222. I think all systems are go for that particular move to include the financials, broker index, and the general market saying, hey, we're now in play. We, we're, we're back in business. Um, TLT. TLT is the Lehman 20th Treasury bond fund. Spikes up to up 98 cents to 131.56. Made an unusual peak G top at 134.30, was it? 134.29. Let me just put that in. I don't have to keep looking. 134.29. And now it's already hit the 129s and it's trading 131.57. High level consolidation. That's what we've been looking at in the monthly chart, weekly chart because of that doji candle peak G. So how the financials act over the coming two weeks, not just one week. It needs to actually go, well, two weeks to go. Yeah, it needs to go into the very first trading day of August. It's going to be really important. If the XLF, <clears throat> sorry, if the TLT is trading in the 135s and yields are way, way low, that means one thing. If the S&P, um, a lot, have, a lot, a lot will include what happens with the S&P. But let me just give you the downside support. If the TLT goes below 129 and yields start to rally, that's going to mean something else. And how does the market interpret that and what is it going to do? So peak B in the TNX, the 10-year Treasury bond yield, Treasury note yield. And now what we're looking at is <clears throat> it needs to get to 2153 to really break to the upside, go for the 50-period moving average of about 2162. And at this particular point, it's stuck in the range. It's just kind of stuck there after a massive decline. So we've got all those things. Uh, had, oh, Boeing, let's just do Boeing. Was that my Boeing question? Boeing is, ah, Boeing's up 380. It's helping the Dow a little bit. Um, it's at 366.65 in a new, brand new A leg B. But the weekly charts is, nah, you might think you're going somewhere. But this is a close about 381. This thing's stuck in a range. Let's see what that range will hold for the uh, coming a week or two. I uh, had a question about, oh, I had mentioned the Dow Quartet. My Dow Quartet, Caterpillar, IBM, Triple M, and UTX. And I said, they really need to get going because if they can't get going, that's going to be a big laggard as pure industrials. So Caterpillar is making a PD with a doji candle from yesterday at 136.52. Unless Caterpillar can start to break into the 143 level above the weekly downtrend line, I think this is kind of stuck, and that's a long way to go. If it takes that 131 key support, ooh, that's a real problem. Uh, IBM, IBM. Yeah, this is a nice rally. Look, it's walked the 9 and the 14 period moving average, making a peak G slash C. Weekly charts making a V-shaped pattern, trying to get back to the 145s. It's at 143 right now. Uh, it's, just, it's doing okay. Triple M had a nice day yesterday. What's it doing today? Uh, it's just consolidating peak D yesterday. If there's no new high, recovery high, that, month, that weekly and monthly those weekly and monthly charts just need so much more. And UTX United Technologies trading at oh peak D uh, three days ago and now it's sharply lower, down a dollar ninety-seven to one thirty-one twenty-two. Yeah, this is saying to me that I think I'm correct that we are in a process of having a digestive phase. And that's kind of what these guys are saying. Hey, what about Amazon? Because aren't they finished now, the two-day, whatever? Yep, there's that sideways move. I drew it in. It's a trading at 2,000, down 925. If it closes under one, uh, if it closes under 1972, that's a real serious thing because that's the 14-period moving average in the uh, weekly. Let me just quickly, uh, someone asked me about the E-mini. E-mini, yep, making a peak B. It's struggling now. It's having a tough time. So there we go. I think I've covered a lot of the questions. Now, I wanted to do this because I had spoken about the SLX, which is the SEAL sector. Look how nicely it's holding. It's not doing great, but it's certainly holding a lot better than you would think. So S SLX, Steel, e Mark Van Eck, Vectors, Steel, ETF, trading at 38.93, down 13 cents, kind of stuck between 37.80. 
on the downside and the 200 degree moving average of 39.72 resistance on the upside. Yes, I will look at IEP. I think that's an icon something or other. I got an icon, but an icon. Um, I'll do that in a moment. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Dow's down 50. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. I will just do this quickly before we wrap up. Don't, you, don't forget, you're going to Steve, then you're going to uh, Dave, Tom O'Brien. My service is the opening call, daily, uh, daily newsletter. Had some really nice uh, position trades uh, over the many months. And let's see how they can go for this month as well. Dow Icon is trading at 7505. Uh, 0.72 down. Icon Enterprises made a peak E back in uh, August, I think, of last year, uh, up in the 80, 81-ish area, plunges to 50, rallies up to 77, pulls back to 68, and now it's trading at 75. Yes, this is in a, in a rectangle formation in the weekly. It's holding very nicely. Would you go long? Uh, you, know, I, I, you know, he does things right. He's a bit of a pain. But I think that, yeah, I, I like this one I'm looking at. But I probably would say to you, I'd prefer the low 73s at 7505 right now. This, look at this again. Give me a yell uh, between 73 and 7250. That's where I really want to look at it. If it goes uh, high, uh, higher before then, that's good action. But this is what I would like to look at. That was a question. So let me do a couple of things here. Now, the Dow, if the Dow closes, I'd say to subscribe to my opening call my comprehensive daily newsletter, that we've got to watch this because the Dow minus 40s or more at um, 
after two o'clock, I want you to give it a full couple of hours of, of trading. But if after four o'clock, there'll probably be a week close. Um, and, and if the S&P um, E-mini is down minus four or more, and it's down right now minus, uh, I can't even see what it is. Yeah, so it's down a, a lot more than that. It's down eight. Um, at two o'clock, there's a good chance that we're going to have a weakness. And I, I said, if there's weakness, there'll be weakness into Thursday. That's the way I'm looking at it. So you know what I did? I just told you all the story about the uh, <clears throat> the patterns we're looking at. But yeah, let me show you something. <clears throat> In the 120-minute chart, they've just generated a 27,200 um, automated support level. The low today is uh, 27,240. So watch that closely. A close under 27,200 in the next two days goes under that. In the meantime, it's just a sideways consolidation. Not too bad, but it is saying that every, every hour we're starting to see a little bit more weakness. So be careful. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow. Check out my opening call. <clears throat> Stay tuned for Steve. See you soon.